Welcome back to my channel. I am Di, your favorite yoga witch, and this is Di's Daily Divination Draw. I sp spend the first couple minutes of every draw wishing a friend or relative a very happy birthday, and today happens to be my friend's older brother Mac's birthday, so happy birthday, Mac. Before we get into our stuff, I want to say please hit the like and subscribe buttons, hit the bell if you want to know what I'm posting, drop a comment if something I say here today resonates with you. All right. Okay, so, what do the cards have to tell us today? Our tarot cards for today. First, we have the Three of Cups reversed. Overindulgence, frivolity, and promiscuity. Hmm, then... We have the Nine of Cups, which says a fulfillment of your wishes, but your happiness may be temporary. And then finally, we have the Nine of Pentacles, which says we have a fondness for luxury and the creature comforts of home. Hmm. Kind of hard to balance that fondness for the comforts of home with being a little bit promiscuous. Oracle number one, we have a second option. Next, underlying motives. And our third oracle card today. Someone has unmet needs. Of the rune is Natis. I have swapped how I am divining the runes, and we are using the book Runes for Beginners by Lisa Chamberlain. And she says, Nadis is also known as Naud, Naudurs, Nat, Natis, and Naid, Need? Uh, need, because it translates literally to need and necessity. Our key words for Nadis are need, necessity, scarcity, absence, restriction, and have patience. God, is that one I need today. Ha! Need. Our primary themes. This rune signifies hardship in the form of your needs are not being met. Which, hmm, someone has unmet needs. Love it when things work together. Whether this indicates poverty, hunger, unemployment, or just a lack of good health maybe even a lack of emotional support. We don't know. Um, la, uh, the rune stave represents the need fire, a ritual fire lit from two large beams of wood that ancient European, Northern Europeans would light in times of extreme hardship or disaster, such as famine or outbreak of fatal disease. The lights of Gondor are lit. Gondor needs aid. Hello, people. So, you may be experiencing some hardships that limit your ability to move forward or even live comfortably, which, you know, kind of harkens back to 
our, let me confirm, yep, our Nine of Pentacles that says you like the comforts of home. Um, or maybe just a strong desire that appears impossible to fulfill. The possibilities are restricted due to your lack of resources and you're likely chasing them as um, a constraint and or you are disheartened by those circumstances. Treat this situation as a period of learning and an opportunity to strengthen your resilience. No one enjoys a hardship while it's happening. However, when we look back on the experiences who shaped us as a person, generally at least a few of them were less than pleasant. So don't allow bitterness, worry, or despair to get the best of you, but Rather, use your gifts and your talents to find ways to get those needs met. Remember, needs and limitations are necessary for growth as we would never learn or accomplish anything significant if we always had everything we needed or wanted handed to us on a silver platter, right? Right. Hmm. Some additional meanings for Nadis. It may be warning you to avoid greed or an unhealthy desire, which can lead you to some destructive behaviors and therefore the negative consequences of said um, destructive behaviors. If you have been focusing a little too heavily on the material world and the physical aspect of life, this is your sign to look within, do that shadow work, and tend to your spiritual development. This rune may also be warning against making some hasty decisions or committing to something right this second, um, as you may pop up with some unexpected needs or limitations because of this. You are being advised to conserve your energy, focusing only on the essentials right this second. You are likely simply just not at the right time or place to move forward. Patience is a virtue. Some magical uses of Nautis. It is a protection rune. Um, it helps maintain equanimity in difficult circumstances. It activates magical workings focused on attraction or just general increase. Today's goddess came to me last night, strangely. We are working with the muses today. They are, duh, goddesses of inspiration. Start looking around for inspiration from unusual places. The Greek muses are planting sparks all around you and you just have to open your eyes to find them. Hmm. What is our mythology for the muses? They are Greek, most of us know. Um, daughters of Zeus and Nemesine, the goddess of memory, the nine goddesses overseeing arts and sciences are collectively known as the muses. According to legend, they were born on the mountain of Parnassus, and so many poets and scholars would travel there to drink from a spring that ran down the mountain, hoping to gain divine inspiration. Each of the muses oversees a different aspect of creativity. Calliope is um, poetry. Cleo, muse of history. Euterp, Euterpe? Euterpe? Lyrical poetry, melpomene, <laughs> tragedy, thalia, comedy, um, terpsichor, I love that name, terpsichor got, is the muse for dance, polyhymnia is music and storytelling, urania is astronomy, Uranus, urania, probably named for her, and shockingly, arato, is erotic poetry and mime. However, if one muse is present, anyone 
can petition her for their inspiration in any aspect. Divine, or whoops, gifting mortal endeavors with their divine spirit. Muses are loving and joyful, often singing songs of praise. They also bestow mortals with talent and skill. Often they're worshipped with milk, honey, and wine. Modern museums originated as shrines to the muses. Museums, muse, museum, makes sense. Call on the muses when you're looking for inspiration and a boost in your talent, particularly the one who oversees your specific area. So, me personally, um, for my typical artistic endeavors, I would be petitioning polyhymnia because I am a musician. Hmm. I love it. The muses are fascinating. I want to learn more about them. Today's namaste is traveling to your peaceful place. You don't have to jump on an airplane to experience that place of personal power and tranquility that leaves you feeling rejuvenated. Instead of a physical vacation, travel to your favorite place often using visualization. Close your eyes and relax your body. Imagine a place that you feel connected to that gives you a sense of peace and or power. Often, this is a place in nature that you have enjoyed and may know quite well. It may also be a place you have never physically been, but you would like to go. Makes sense. Rest here for a while and pay attention to each of your senses. Is the wind blowing your hair? Do you smell sweet grass or maybe soft, damp earth? What do you see? Pay attention to these details and as you continue to practice, your place may become more and more vivid. Traveling to your peaceful place can help relax your mind and your body. Today's self-compassion is lean in deeper. Yesterday we had lean in. Today we are leaning in deeper. Is a part of your emotional experience calling out in pain or discomfort. Can you just be with it without trying to change it for five breaths? We have our moment of zen. We have three that I'm going to read because they all go together. First, we have Hakuin. What is this true meditation? Is it to make everything coughing, swallowing, waving the arms, motion, stillness, words, action, the evil and the good, prosperity and shame, gain and loss, right and wrong, into one single koan? Krishnamurti says, meditation is not a means to an end. It is both the means and the end. And then finally, Sharon Salzberg says, we don't meditate to get better at meditating. We meditate to get better at life. Mm, that last one. Oh, is it true? So that's everything for today. Do the like, share, subscribe thing that I mentioned earlier if you feel so inclined. Drop a comment in the comment box if something I said resonated with you. Um, hop over to Patreon for behind the scenes stuff, blog, pictures, you know, all kinds of exclusive stuff there. Um... That QR code is attached. I will pop a link in the description box later. Um, if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one tarot reading or a pendulum reading with me, 
or a one-on-one -on -one yoga session, I am a yoga witch after all, hop over to the website, www.yogawithdylin.com, and you can book a session with me. If Reiki is more your thing, then hop over to the website and book a Reiki session with my girl Erin, my partner in crime and one of my absolute favorite people in the world. She is with Savannah's Crystal Reiki Healing. Or if you're not feeling the Reiki thing but you still want a tarot reading, Erin has a completely different take on the tarot than I do. You might resonate better with her. Um, This witch runs on coffee. So if you are feeling so inclined... Um, hop over to buy me a coffee and, you know, buy a witch a cup of coffee. Uh, this witch is fueled by coffee and sarcasm. I am a child of the 80s, after all. Uh, let's see, what else are we doing? Tune in tomorrow at the same bat time, same bat channel for Daily Draw, Monday through Friday. We're here doing this. Thursdays, we do our podcast. Fridays is... Friday night guided meditation to get your weekend off relaxed. It's a great way to start the weekend. And like I said, Thursdays we do podcast where we, you know, talk yoga with a witchy twist. It's fun. <sighs> and after all of that, my darling witchlings, spread some love, some joy, and some kindness. There is way too much hate and discontent out there to contribute to it. Tell your loved ones they mean something. I include our furry ones there, too. You never know when your last opportunity is going to be. And with that, I bid you all a fond farewell. I will see you all tomorrow. I love you guys. Have a fantabulous, magical, wonderful day. Let's see then. Next card is Nine of Pentacles, which says you have a fondness for luxury and the comforts of home. But, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the wrong card. Nine of Pentacles or Nine of Cups is a fulfillment of wishes, but your happiness is temporary. So you're overindulging, being frivolous, and maybe a bit prom promiscuous. But you have a fondness for luxury. And and then we have the Nine of Pentacles, which I'm having a day and not being able to read my damn notes. You know what? We're starting over. <laughs> ah, I lost my notes. Scheisenhosen.